now welcome to uh, World Talks on TVP World. I'm Diana Skaya. And back to our main story this morning now. Bulgaria's far-right revival party is pushing for legislation inspired by that of the Kremlin. Now, the foreign agent bill is akin to a law of the same name passed in Georgia earlier this year. Now, this new foreign agent proposal would require organizations, uh, artists, journalists, bloggers of any kind receiving foreign funds to register as foreign agents and essentially bar them from being able to comment on political events, participate in government projects, and from working in state universities. Now, with us in studio this morning to discuss the implications is Piotr Kaczynski, EU, uh, EU expert at the Geremek Foundation. Um, Mr. Piotr, thank you so much for being uh, with us here uh, this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, Mr. Piotr, given that some high-profile members of Revival have themselves actually uh, benefited from foreign-funded programs, right? And this also among them uh, is the leader's uh, Kostadin Kostadinov's wife among them. How do you view the party's push for the legislation and what implications might this actually have for Bulgaria's relationship with the European uh, Union and actually the values that the, that the EU, uh, that the EU uh, has? Right, I mean, there are at least two questions there, right? So first, Revival is a far-right organization um, that uh, is basically welcome to the post-truth uh, situation. It doesn't matter what happened uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, what is important is today and the fight for power. Remember that Bulgaria has about, uh, well, too many elections. Uh, their election cycle is probably six months. Uh, let's put it this way, right? Because uh, they have so many elections uh, that there's constantly a fight for power. And here we are in a post-truth element where uh, one party is saying something. And look, it doesn't matter that uh, they were basically, uh, they were there to, uh, to to basically take uh, like a scholarship uh, from American universities or get a fund from European Commission to do something. Um, it doesn't matter, right? What matters is here and now. So that's the first uh, question or part of the question. And then, of course, what is going on with the EU values here? Um, it's a scapegoat. It's so easy to say, oh, foreign agents are bad. Uh, we need to take care of that. Uh, this is what happened in Georgia, for example, a couple months ago. With the massive protests that were that were taking place as well. Absolutely. So look, this is this is exactly where we are, and the European Commission, not only the European Commission, has to protest against this um, again, before this pass uh, this act will be passed in uh, in Bulgarian Parliament, uh, because this is a threat. Uh, the same is going on in Hungary, and we see what's going on in Hungary. So Bulgaria doesn't want to be um, treated like Hungary is. Uh, Hungary is on the verge to basically almost leave Schengen. That's pretty much done. And who knows what's what's next for Hungary? What would the passage of such a law mean for Bulgaria's uh, civil uh, society and, of course, democratic institutions? So Take this is that. this is a tricky question here because um, in the EU and Bulgaria is part of the EU. Uh, what is foreign? This is the main question, because if in the EU foreign will mean that in Bulgaria uh, commission funds or any European funds are still treated as equal to the Bulgarian funds, then it will be middle way somewhere there, if this law is passed. But if uh, European funds are, uh, are treated like this, Look, you have a scientist in Bulgaria who are doing research about uh, cancer, how to fight against cancer, probably. Uh, and, uh, and they are probably are going to be funded by European Commission. Are they supposed to be registered as a foreign agent? It's, it's crazy. Would you say that, uh, of course, in your opinion, that Russia is marking its sphere of influence of here? Of course. Oh, this is this is more than obvious. Uh, this is uh, this is a tool of uh, um, of uh, in the Moscow hands. Whether they are directly paid or not, we have those uh, we have those uh, history here in this country where we have the, uh, the basically the term is uh, that you are a uh, a willing. I'm not going to use uh, bad words, but uh, this is a person who is doing a policy of a foreign power not even being paid for it. In your opinion, do you think that it's going to pass? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. The, uh, the leader behind in Sofia is uh, Boyko Borisov, uh, who, is, uh, who is firmly, well, he's not 
super clean himself, but he is a smart politician and he's firmly rooted in what is uh, possible, what is not possible. So, and there are major political forces as well in Bulgaria on the liberal front uh, that are against that. So this is not Georgian situation at all, where majority of the, po of the public would uh, support such a motion. I want to turn your attention now to uh, Germany for a minute. So German Chancellor Olaf Scholz uh, has called for a renewed effort to bring Russia to the negotiating table, right? And he said that also, uh, negotiating table, of course, for peace in Ukraine. And he said that Zelensky, so Ukraine's President Zelensky, has agreed, uh, agreed on his stance. Now, what challenges do you predict uh, are going to get Russia to actively participate in this, uh, in this peace conference? Well, this is so early, right? Uh, first of all, we need to hear from President Zelensky what he has to say on the matter, what has changed, because the terms of negotiations are super important here, if there's a new process coming uh, coming up. Uh, so. Uh, Every previous uh, peace process that uh, Ukraine was putting on the table, Russians were saying absolutely Smart not. Yeah. Uh, what Russians are saying, yeah, let's talk on our conditions, Ukraine says absolutely not. So is there something new uh, here or not? This is a big question because Mr. Schultz, well, he's coming out of a very difficult situation inside Germany. Uh, so maybe he needs a quick... Uh, quick uh, success outside um, so but this is I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it very tentatively uh, so be cautious about it and let's see what's happened next about uh, this initiative I would be very surprised if it's going to be positively uh, reception in Moscow you just mentioned uh, that uh, Schultz is having of course internal problems uh, walk us through a little bit about the, d the domestic opposition uh, that is going on in Germany. Do you think that this is going to be uh, a factor in, uh, in in being able to to to, to side to side with Ukraine, uh, especially when the EU, uh, how the EU is going to play in supporting Ukraine? Look, there's time? there's still a very strong majority pro-Ukrainian majority in Germany. We have to remember this is a, a country that is internally divided, at least in people's minds, between smaller east and much larger West Germany. So the same situation that happened in those two states earlier this month uh, is not going to repeat itself or wouldn't uh, repeat them itself in 2024 in Western states or London. Uh, and that is very critical and crucial point to uh, remember. Having said that, it was a major setback for uh, Scholz and the Greens and the Liberals who are in the ruling coalition. So yes, it is a setback, but a really surprising effect out there is that maybe with a different proportion, IFD and uh, um, uh, BSW, the new far left slash don't know what, we, what it is truly party, um, are gaining in popularity. So together, uh, they are so popular that they could uh, receive really high, high support among the public. And the reasons for it is that they have two similar positions. So they, they differ enormously on a lot of issues, but they have similar positions on Ukraine and on migration. Uh, let's put aside just for a second the, the EU now. We know that uh, President Zelensky is going to be taking a trip to the United States uh, to meet with the Biden administration. He said that he would also meet with the, uh, the presidential uh, candidates, right, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, uh, to discuss about so far these undisclosed peace plans. Uh, can you tell me anything about this? I cannot because they are undisclosed. Uh, so uh, look, if there is some situation, uh, new situation, it would be only coming from Ukraine. If there is a change of anything, it has to come from Ukraine. Entire Western coalition supporting Ukraine has been, and for the right reason, uh, standing behind Ukraine saying, it is up to Ukrainians to define the, uh, the end of this war. And if the Ukrainians are going to fight till the end, we are with the Ukrainians until the end of that war. But if the Ukrainians change their mind anyhow, within that war, what they want to achieve, for example, vis-a-vis -vis Crimea, vis-a-vis -vis Donbas, uh, then the West is there to stand by Ukraine, but it has to be a Ukrainian decision. Uh, it should not be pressured or it should not be viewed as pressured uh, from outside. And this also as, uh, I mean, some are predicting that America's foreign policy, depending of course on the results of the election, is going to shift, right, compared to 
could, right. it could, but there's a lot at, of, of mixed uh, uh, messages coming from US. Signals, right. First of all, si signals. Uh, first of all, these elections are open. Uh, so we absolutely have no idea who's going to win in November. Uh, and then uh, there are signals that Republicans and Democrats are more and more converging on Ukraine, even if Donald Trump wins. So, of course, if Kamala Harris wins, then the likelihood of the continuation of Biden foreign policy will continue. So that is a big question for uh, for Zelensky. And Zelensky knows that Biden's in office until January. So this is a long four, a long four and a half months to go. To go, right. Uh, Mr. Kaczynski, a uh, final topic I want to cover with you this morning is um now the uh, EU uh, commissioner. So we have both Slovenia's nominee uh, and Romania's initial male candidate who are withdrawing, right, uh, after pressure from Ushula von der Leyen to achieve gender balance. Right. Now, how significant is this push for gender equality within the European uh, Commission? It's significant, but it's not enough. Uh, the, uh, Do you think it's going to also like reshape the, the political uh, structure and then the, the, the leadership? Well, there's a big question out there. Uh, there. The big question out there is a dilemma that von der Leyen has. First, she struggles to get the gender balance. She needs something close to what she got last time, which was 13 uh, ladies and 14 men. Um, and that was viewed rightly so for a balance within 27. Right now, we, don't, we are not even there. But if she gets at least to 12 ladies, women, in the College of Commissioners, then it, we can discuss that there is a parity or not. So she is definitely on a hunt. Uh, she is willing to, uh, to, to go for it very long way. Why? Because of who supports her in the European Parliament. It is the left wing and the European People's Party who is supporting von der Leyen. The Social Democrats uh, in the European Parliament are super upset. Why? Because they control very few uh, uh, prime minister's positions in the EU. Hence, there's very few commissioners coming from social democracy. And they are a much bigger party in the European Parliament. So what, having only five social democratic um, commissioners? Not enough. So they are upset about their size and the women factor. Then are the Greens, who supported and save on the line in July. And for them, parity is the ultimate, most important element, next to the Green transition, for example. So. This is something where those two coalition partners will have major problems supporting uh, commission. Causing uh, tension. Uh, yes. Tension. So there's a question. Is Italian uh, ECR worth the game? Because this is the, the big question that definitely is being discussed here. Mr. Piotr Kaczynski, uh, EU uh, expert, thank you so much for uh, your input and being with us uh, this morning. Thank you for having me. And that's all for this edition of World Talks. Thanks for having been with us. I'm your host, Diana Skaya. Stay tuned for our next edition.